Somehow, I managed to not charge my second GoPro battery. So in a moment, this is gonna die, and I'm gonna switch to this. Maybe I'll just do that now. Well, I figured my helmet is easier to deal with than this camera. <laughs> this tank is on its last leg. It's almost out of gas. Man, so last night, the creepiest thing that's ever happened to me in the woods happened. I was lying here, and I thought I heard something walk up, right? And, and I've heard animals in the bush before, but this thing walked up, like, right outside my tent. Like, it was between the bike and the tent. And normally animals don't have the balls to get that close. So I laid there and listened to it, and it walked away. And I, I was ready to let it go, and then it came back. Like, it came back fast. And I kid you not, I heard sniffing right outside the tent. Like, it came up to the tent and was sniffing the tent. Never had that happen before. Normally, an animal in the wild is really cautious, and not only will you not hear them walk up, they're unlikely to walk up to you. I mean, I guess some animals feel safer at night, but I've spent a lot of time in the woods hunting deer and stuff, and I'll tell you, you know, a 150-pound deer can walk up right behind you and you won't even know it. You know, so the fact that this thing made noise was very weird. But when it started sniffing, I sat up and I smacked the ground a couple times and I, I said, hey. And the weirdest thing is, it didn't go away. Like, I didn't hear it run off. It, it just was silent. So I grabbed my pistol and I sat here maybe five minutes straight. And I sat here just looking out the tent window. Because if it started creeping around, I wanted to see what it was. And so eventually I thought, alright, I, I have to go back to bed. It's gone or whatever. But, you know, logically... I didn't hear it go away, so logically it's still here. So I had to get out and actually check. I popped my head out, there was nothing here. No footprints, nothing. I shined my light all around the tent, there was nothing. Coincidentally, I had to pee, so I just peed all over the ground. It was weird, dude. It was definitely very weird. Because there's like black bears and shit up here. They're not exactly predators by nature. Anything that has the balls to walk up to me and smell me is something I don't want to get to know. It also occurred to me that I probably shouldn't be carrying hollow points. I think if you're shooting at a wild animal, you want to you want some penetration. Of course, anything that gets shot's probably going to scram. So anyway, the more I thought about this last night, the more I wondered if I imagined all that. I was definitely awake. That's such an unusual thing to happen that I don't I don't know. I don't know, is it scarier to have imagined that and thought it was real than for it to have actually happened? Anyway, I'm going to pack up, I'm going to drink my tea, we're going to probably head up to Young, check out some more of this road. <laughs> See how this is all wet on the inside? That's all condensation from my breath. If you have a tent that's not properly ventilated, and you're sleeping in your tent for multiple days on end. You could actually soak your sleeping bag. And if you're in cold weather, that's a problem. So now, I'm just gonna reattach these two tabs and roll it up with the fly on. And then that way, I never have to match it up again. And setup should go faster. I was also gonna tie stakes on to these loops, but I 
don't feel like it. I beat the shit out of this tent, man. If these buckles ever break, I wonder if Wolfman would replace them for me. Now it almost looks like nobody's been here. Well, it's the moment of truth. <sighs> does not make me feel good. Almost got it started though. Just put my gloves on. Because if it starts running, I'm going to take off. I wonder if I could push start it. Oh, shit. Thank you, God. I'm gonna do this until I know for sure it's warmer than it was. That way if it dies, I won't have to drain the battery trying to start it again. Hopefully. And off we go. Oh man, my visor is just totally covered in moisture. So I think it's like 40 degrees outside right now. No, I think the low last night was supposed to be 43. I was warm as fuck. In fact, I woke up in the middle of the night and I was actually damp from my own sweat. I was that warm. I'm telling you, man, if you got the right gear, you won't have any issues staying warm. One, one thing I've been wanting to do for a long time, like well over a year, is camp in below freezing weather. Just go out for like 24 or 48 hours in like zero degree weather, or at least something below the tens. Just I can't get my friends to do it. Partially because they don't have time and partially because they probably think I'm stupid. I think I am stupid. <laughs> but wouldn't that make for an awesome video? So anyway, this is Arizona Route 288. It goes up the mountains into, into the town of Young. Uh, I'm not sure what Young is. It's a, it, it is officially a town, but like there's really almost nothing there. I don't know what the people who live there do for a living. They might just like ranch, I guess. Um, but this is one of the two ways, or one of the three ways, I believe, out of the town. I can't remember the name of this mountain range, but it's absolutely stunning. I would love to live in a place that looked like this. I just, it's something about the trees and the nature and the cold it just makes you feel alive in a way that the desert just kind of doesn't like it's freezing right now like my nipples hurt and i've got three layers on my neck is freezing oh it's not covered up that's why Fuck. but it's amazing I, I love it i love it up here i think someday i'm going to definitely try to live in colorado i've been there once when i passed through i spent like a day there and this is kind of what I imagine the, the remote areas or the forested areas are like. Like if I told you I was in Colorado right now, you probably wouldn't know any better. Well, I'm going to stop and cover up my neck so it doesn't feel like I'm getting frostbite. There's a nice camp spot right there. You know, it's just, it's crazy because like you, you run these routes through the woods and you just find camping spots on the side of the road. They just exist. They're just little fire rings and like it's just legal to just sit down, throw your, throw your tent up. Nobody cares. Like all of the western states are kind of like that, I believe. Because these national park areas, they're just so, they're not exactly remote, but they're just unpopulated. So like there's, there's no problem coming in here for recreation and just camping and and it's all unsupervised. Like in my campsite, I didn't show it, but there were bullet shells all over the ground. Anyway, I'm going to do what I said earlier and fix my neck thing.
So I just stopped because I saw this awesome campsite. And look at this, those are deer hooves. Some hunter was out here butchering his deer and they buried the hooves in the fire pit. This is the town of Young. It's really freaking cold, man. I'm only doing 40 miles an hour and it's like pretty overwhelming. But anyway, so this town is pretty much like nestled in this giant valley in this mountain range. It's absolutely stunning. But I don't know what they do. Like, I don't know if there's jobs here or like if all of these people just have their own ranch or how this, how this works. So a lot of my anxiety that I had yesterday seems to be uh, diminished. I mean, this bike has this weird idling issue where it wants to die if it, if it idles for too long. But yeah, I definitely am definitely feeling better today about this. I was nervous. Whenever you're on a camping trip, or at least whenever I'm on a camping trip, the first night is always the roughest night. There's like this uncertainty. Even though you've done it a million times, there's still like this fear. I feel like every time like I'm on, the, I'm on day two, it's like I've almost always overcome it. I'm just like, yeah, let's go. One of the things I've been doing by like buying all this nice luggage gear is I'm trying to figure out a way I can haul camping equipment to live with, camera gear to film with for like a longer trip. Because like today, I have all day off. It's Saturday. I, theoretically, I could just keep going north and I could camp again somewhere else tonight. I'm just wondering like, I'm trying to figure out a way to design my kit so I can do that and uh, do it for long term. Like in the future, I plan on buying a drone, so I need a way to package the drone on the bike, you know? Just ideas and experimentation. So this, this trip and future trips are gonna be experimenting in different ways to carry gear. I, I need to get like a, like a tank bag. Wolfman makes this one called the Enduro Tank Bag. It's real tiny and it just kind of fits between its seat and the gas tank. And I think it's the perfect size to turn into a camera bag. Because if I could do that, I wouldn't have to have this backpack bungeed on, on like on top of all my shit. And I could actually have a proper way to, to access my camera gear really easily. Because like as it is now, I gotta like unbuckle things and take bungees off and open up a backpack and it's just kind of like a process. And the bigger the process is to pull out your cameras, the less likely you are to use them. It's one of the reasons why I don't keep my camera in its camera case anymore. I used to always carry it in its camera bag. It's like padded and stuff and it's just, it's a bitch to put that in the backpack and then pull it out and use it. So I just throw the camera in the backpack, hope for the best, secure it in a safe manner and live with it. I just, I really wish I could take this thing, this project and, and amp it up. You know, I wish I could take it and make it like even better quality. I mean, if I could get like a, a camera guy to follow me around and do like actual documentary style filmmaking, that would be the goal, ultimately. Somebody who knows what they're doing, someone who can like drive ahead of me and get nice rolling shots and stuff. Like, I can't do it as one man, but I'm gonna get as good as I can as a one man operation. That's for sure. The thing is, like, how do you how do you meet somebody who rides bikes specifically dual sport and is also into filmmaking? Like, that's a niche. How do you find that guy? Where is he at? <laughs> In that film, Long Way Around, Ewan McGregor and and Charlie Borman, they mentioned that like they had a hard time finding a guy, uh, a camera bike to follow them. I wonder if that's still the case today, or if other guys who are into filmmaking and motorcycling like decided to take up that niche. I don't know. Regardless, there's no way I could pay the person, so it doesn't really matter. So anyway, I'm gonna take off to the left up here once I bought the road. I don't remember exactly the name of the turn, but there's a, another dirt route that kind of cuts out of Young to the uh, uh, northwest, I think it is. And it kind of goes towards that highway that meets up with Payson. So my, my plan is to run that and then cut down to Payson, buy fuel, and then just head home. So if there's anything cool along the way, I'll stop and check it out. Otherwise, I'd say it's been a good weekend. Wish all the hashtags, likes and tweets would find a way to get lost Yeah, and when I pull up to the scene I wonder what the hell is the cost Oh, we know, we know, we know, we know, we know it's all for now 
Thousand suns. 